Hello everybody and welcome to the vidIQ live stream and I've got a question for you. Is your channel struggling? Well I'm afraid the simple answer is, you're doing it all wrong! vidIQ vidIQ vidIQ.com Hello everybody, welcome back to vidIQ. My name is Rob. If this is your first time here, we are the YouTube tool and channel that aims to educate you on your YouTube journey. And today we're going to be educating you all about the common mistakes that many video creators, big and small, uh, commit on the YouTube ecosphere, which means that your channel doesn't grow or you hit plateaus or your channel starts to shrink. Uh, God forbid that would ever happen. But as usual, I am welcomed by uh, Jeremy Vest here. And we're going to just talk about some of the reasons why your channel may not be growing and uh, Jeremy you've got lots of awesome things that you're going to talk about uh, throughout this uh, uh, presentation that we're going to have and I'm going to chip in. I just want to say if you are new to vidIQ make sure to give this video a thumbs up, subscribe if you haven't already done so and share this video with any fellow video creators who may find this sort of stuff useful. Alright Jeremy I'm going to just bring down the, whoops you just disappeared there, I'm going to bring down the music here and uh, we're going to start talking about the seven reasons that you've uh, come up with as to why video creators may be struggling with their channel. So take it away and we'll start the discussion here. What's going wrong with your channel potentially? So this is based on our experience with me and Rob and Liron and the team have, you know, billions of, of organic views for to our credit. Um, we've been doing this a long time. And this is really just our observations from seeing hundreds and hundreds of channels and the first one is just lack of focus. When YouTube doesn't know what your channel is about, when your subscribers don't know what your channel is about, how does YouTube send, based on watch history, people to your channel? And how do people have a reason? Why would someone have a reason to subscribe to your channel if they don't know what your channel is about? Rob, what do you think about focusing your channel? I, th I think absolutely. This is probably a question that we're going to ask a lot when we're looking at auditing our channels in a few moments. If we're looking at our channel and within the first 15 to 20 seconds, we can't see what it's immediately about, we're probably going to be asking the question, what is your focus? And sometimes people say technology, sports, politics, but is that really enough? We always think of really niching down, and Jeremy's got a fantastic phrase here, which is two inches wide, but a mile deep in terms of the content that you focus on. And that's really where you're going to start to build a small audience to begin with, but then really push out with a wider audience who are really focused on a particular topic that you start to dominate. Yeah. And a lot of people in the a lot of people in the chat right now are talking about, oh, I only have five subscribers or 291 subscribers. Don't worry about that. Absolutely. Yeah. That has nothing to do with anything. If you do these seven things, if you make great thumbnails, if you have content people want to consume, that'll come later. But you have to go through the journey. You have to go through the, the crap. And, and how hard it is, the mud and everything it takes to become a decent creator and to create content people want to consume. So don't be caught up in where you are. Be caught up in where you could go with focus. And the second uh, reason is value. So are you actually giving someone true value or entertainment? If you're just copying someone else or if, if you're just doing something to do it, like, oh, I want to become a YouTuber and I need 10,000 subscribers, your heart may not be in the value. It may not be in the entertainment and not be, be something worth watching and be honest with yourself on that. You know, so Rob, what do you think about giving value to your audience? I think there's four phase, four ways I look at this. How can I be better than somebody else with quality of the content or the message I'm um, posting? How can I be bigger than somebody else in terms of like the, the amount of information that I give? How can I be faster than anybody else, like getting those new stories to YouTube before anyone else, or being different? I think we'll talk about that a little more, but I think those are four core values for me, which I'm always looking at, which make my content more valuable than potentially somebody else's. Absolutely. And the third is, are you giving someone a reason to watch or click your content? It's not enough just to get someone to watch your content. It's also about the thumbnail and the title, the click, right? So um, 
are you actually giving someone a reason? And there's a lot of reasons uh, <laughs> why uh, people may not be clicking or watching your content, but I would say that good content is not good enough with almost 500 hours uploaded to YouTube every minute. Um, it may not be good enough. It may not it need at this point need to be extraordinary or different, or you, this is where focus and having your, your, you know, your niche really focused. It, it, you may want to attract a specific type of person like you that has the same interests and same values as you. So back like 20 years ago, an underwater basket weaver was a joke in America for people going to college for lame, you know, <laughs> you know, lame degrees. Now having a very specific niche on YouTube with 2 billion users is actually a good thing because even a small community can, can do really big things. I helped a few years ago, a person that teaches people how to do lawn care businesses. He has about 50,000 subscribers and makes hundreds of thousands of dollars a year because there's over 30,000 manufacturers of lawn equipment in America. And basically he's in a niche that no one else is really focused on. There's only, you know, a handful of creators out there. So it's not about your size. It's about the value of your audience. It's about how people actually interact with you. So Rob, what do you think about reasons? What would you, why would you watch something? What would give you a reason to click? I think that's the thing that we can analyze most when we do channel audits. So we'll be asking this question a lot again. Uh, if, if we know what your focus is, then we're going to be looking at the power of those thumbnails. We're doing a series at the moment in, in April, looking at uh, improving your thumbnails and the titles. So yeah, absolutely. Giving people a reason to click, improving the click-through rate, paying attention to that window uh, or into your video content because you can produce the most fantastic video content but if you're going to take a freeze frame from that video which is just you in some sort of weird pose or it doesn't tell a story and tease a viewer into um, your content then you're not giving people a reason to click and we talk about clickbait and all that sort of thing but Jeremy or and I always go back to the um, back to the philosophy of clickbait is only clickbait if people don't watch the content once they're inside the video and it's not delivering on the values promised in the thumbnails. And that can vary quite a lot from audience to audience. What you think is clickbait uh, for certain videos is absolutely ideal for that particular audience. So, yep, giving the reason to click uh, leads to so many more things uh, for a video creator. All right. And the fourth reason you might not be doing well on YouTube is a lack of personality. This is one of the reasons I'm behind the camera most of the time. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> but uh, Rob Wilson has I'm a lot of I'm taking him off camera now, folks. I'm just going <laughs> to swipe him off. So he's got a blank screen now. <laughs> Sorry, carry on. But Rob, um, you know, there's a lot of psychological reasons why you need to have your personality shine. It's not about teaching someone how to do something or entertaining them, it's way beyond that, right? So when we're at VidCon and people come up to Rob, they feel like he's a friend that they've known for a while because he's able to interject his personality and people feel like they know him. So nonverbal communication, the connection people have with, with other YouTubers, this personality is, is really important. One of my favorite channels is Charisma on Command. And this channel really focuses in mm. on teaching you how to have charisma on camera and how to have personality. Um, so definitely focus on this. And again, you really need to try to connect with people like you so that they have a reason to actually want to like you. Everyone wants to like you, but everyone's quick to find a reason not to <laughs> like you. So Figure out a persona and a personality that really matches who you are and then highlight, for example, I have skateboards behind me because I'm an old skater guy and that's part of my my vibe. That's who I am. Rob has a wrestling belt usually somewhere yeah, they're, around. They're somewhere there, they're sort of off screen when I stand up. But uh, yeah, I might bring him into camera uh, later on. Uh, yeah, just to add to your point, uh, Jeremy, folks, look at the vidIQ channel and go back three years when I first started posting videos. I was behind the camera and it was nothing but screen recording content. Fast forward to today, now I'm in front of camera most of the time 
and just make a, a judgment call. Do you think the content was better then or is it bo- better now? We, we like to think that it's better now and the analytics seem to suggest that. And I would also just add uh, on Jeremy's point that personality, yes, from a human being can be important, but also I think from a stylistic point of view, that's making your videos uh, become whether it's the editing style, the way you shoot, people know that it's your video, even if you're not in front of camera. Because I think for some people that might be a, a barrier that they never get past or being in front of camera is just not logical for the type of content that they produce. So I would extend like the personality being the the style of the videos that you create as well, not just the personality of, of the host or the hero. Awesome. What the, are we on to next? The fifth reason is storytelling. Um, you know, I would highly recommend everyone read a few books on the core concepts of storytelling with all good stories. There's a beginning, middle and end. And the better you get, even with how to content, even with content, you would not assume needs Mm -hmm. a storyline. I promise you from the hook to giving someone a reason to watch, to getting them to stay with a long view duration or watch time that story, the building of that story is really important. And an example of this would be Peter McKinnon. There's some reason that I watch Peter McKinnon's videos probably three or four minutes longer than anyone else's. And the reason for that is he's just really good at telling a story, at teasing the story, at cinematography and and just visuals to, to help you move past that story. Watch time is probably the most important metric to being successful on YouTube, to getting YouTube to sub, um, to actually recommend your content. So, Rob, what do you think about storytelling? I think you're absolutely right. And I, I'm, when we've done the notes here, and by the way, we, we're going to bullet point these seven um, things in, in a minute. And when I was thinking about tor- storytelling, I was, as you say, Jeremy, Everything has a story. Even if you're telling somebody how to change a tire or unblock a toilet, the way that story might be told is that you give the audience the problem and how the final solution is going to be at the beginning of a video, and then you have the explainer, the meat, the, the uh, and, ha- and the rest of it, and then you might have some sort of questions or answers at the end. Like if you watch our beginners videos that we're doing right now, we'll tell you exactly how to do whatever it is, whether it delete a channel, download a thumbnail, delete a video, and so on. But then there's sort of questions and answers after it, like going into the detail, and that is there are storytelling storytelling elements there. And yeah, as Jeremy says, read books or watch other people's videos on how this is done and just practice and consider at least like as I've somebody has said it in the chat a three arc uh, story element a beginning middle and end the beginning uh, by the way is just so important especially on YouTube videos to grab the viewer into that um, into that content and that's usually done in the first 15 to 30 seconds people have usually made a decision whether they're going to watch the rest of a video in the first 10 to 15 seconds so absolutely the beginning the introducing that story to the audience, which then feeds back, of course, to the thumbnail and the title. The, the story elements going all over the place on YouTube. All right. The sixth one is quality. Basically, there's two things that most uh, viewers will not tolerate. Bad audio and bad light around the eyes. That's basically the two main things people don't tolerate. Rob, do you have anything to add to that? I would just say, yeah, I think audio first is probably the one thing that you want to improve it before anything else. And that can be done with a, a $20 microphone. Uh, but the, and there are some elements, of, of course, where people are shooting in not ideal uh, shooting locations. And that's where you want to perhaps improve the... Um, your framing and how you are as a, a, a videographer or a videographer. And uh, but I think, yeah, that's one thing where you're just improving 1%. And, and But I think also on the flip side that people don't want to get too caught up in getting the best audio or the best visuals. They want to just aim to improve that 1% every single video because you don't want to create that as a like an artificial barrier to entry. Because I know a lot of people use that as an excuse. So you should always be thinking press record to get something down. And then you can use, I mean, the Evan Carmichael philosophy of doing something 50 million times because... The, the amount of the quantity of times that you do it allows you to improve the quality and that's going to include audio and visual. Yeah. And, and I agree that on the flip side, like Rob said, just record and get 1% better every week. 
Um, don't allow this to be an excuse of, oh, I don't have a good enough camera or I don't have a good enough mic or I don't have a good enough this or that or story. If you're not creating, you're not growing and you're not going to go anywhere. Yeah, so, you can, you can, you, sometimes you can't improve your technology, but you can always improve your skills. And, and, and that's like just self discipline to work on that. And what I love is I meet all the time, a lot. I meet YouTubers with over a million, two million, three million subscribers that that honestly know nothing about good thumbnails or titles or tags (laughs) or, you know, all the nerd stuff. And, but they're phenomenal on camera and they hit the record button every single day. And, you know, the, Don't underestimate how important it is just to get on camera to get 1% better every week and to not even focus on the tech stuff, just record. And the seventh and final thing is no unique selling point. So there's, you don't, you're not different. You're it's, we call this in product marketing, we call this me too, right? So do you just, are you just doing the same type of content and same channel as everyone else? If you're doing Fortnite, are you just like the other 10 million Fortnite channels or do you have a unique value proposition? Are you different? Are you setting yourself apart? I would say, I'm going to ask a question here uh, for the people who are on the channel, uh, on, on the live stream right now. Think of who our, I'm not going to use the word competitors, but other video creators who work in our space. We've got uh, Dara Leaves. Tim Schmoyer, Nick Nimmin, Brian G. Johnson, uh, and we've got other ones. And I would ask you, if you've watched those channels, how does vidIQ differ to that? And I think the answer for me when I think about how I differ to these other channels is we're, we're all sort of giving more or less the same information about how to grow your channel. But I think I try and do it in a comedic way. I'll try and in, in, inject a bit of humor into all the videos that I do. And... Other people probably do it in a more serious way. And any way is fine, but at least I'm um, I'm placing myself in a from a different stylistic viewpoint to perhaps other video creators. And whether you like that or not, I think at least we, we get a response from that. And the people who like our content are going to be more invested in it. I don't know, Jeremy, I like I've just put that out there. Would you agree with that sort of sentiment that like even in this YouTuber expert space, we're trying to do something a little different here on vidIQ? Absolutely. And, you know, from practicing what we preach to thumbnails to mm. um, 5, 10% of the time playing around with trends. I mean, we're really you know, walking the walk of what we teach. Yeah. And for uh, those of you that are new, we went from 100,000 subscribers to 320,000 subscribers in a year by you know, literally practicing what we preach. So we're serious about, you know, all of the data we collect. We're serious about uh, helping you guys grow. And we're we're doing it. You know, we're, we're here. And, you know, it's funny. There's sometimes a lot of haters. They're like, why would you do this? Or why would you do that video? At the end of the day, 80% of the time, we're teaching people how to do YouTube, but we're also exploring and experimenting so that we know what works and what doesn't. Which is one of the reasons why we've now got 200 people watching this live stream as opposed to around about 100 that we had this time last year. So thank you very much, everybody who's on the live stream here. And let's just recap what Jeremy and I have just been going through. Reasons why you don't do well potentially on YouTube. Lack of focus. I guarantee you we're going to be at this phrase is going to be coming up multiple times in the li- in the audits that we're about to do. No real value or entertainment. Can a viewer get something of uh, the same type of information or entertainment from somewhere but better? No reason to watch or click. This is going back to your thumbnails and your titles. Getting people interested in your content before they even click and watch it. Lack of personality. That might maybe through you as a person in front of camera or the choices you make uh, when you edit and shoot your video. Not good at storytelling. Every single video has a story. To, has a story. Would you believe it? This live stream does have a story because what we're doing now is we had the sort of casual introduction to the live stream. Now we're introducing this really important uh, idea of mistakes that you might be making and then we're going to be going into how we can help you so there is a flow a format a story being told in this live stream 
audio and video quality issues or um, not necessarily looking at the technology but making sure that you're improving your skills with the technology that you have and finally that unique selling point what is your USP how can you define that in the videos that you make and we're going to be doing that pretty much right now with our channel audit so thank you very much everybody who joined us uh, for looking at the mistakes here if you are enjoying this live stream do make sure to give it a thumbs up and uh, share this video uh, live stream with other vi video creators who may find it useful and of course if you haven't already subscribed but I'm sure you have done do make sure to click the subscribe button all right gentlemen we're on to our favorite section of the live stream which is of course looking at your channels and uh, finding out all sorts of weird and wonderful channels out there and offering our feedback as YouTube enthusiasts. I, uh, Jeremy, I always consider myself an enthusiast rather than an expert. How do you consider yourself uh, when people say like a YouTube consultant? Because I'm always keen to say that uh, I'm just giving you my knowledge and experience from the videos and the years that I've been working on YouTube. I haven't necessarily read a video marketing book myself or taken courses or had um, hidden access to YouTube. That means I know more than anybody else. It's just through my own uh, sheer bloody mindedness. Well, what about you? You know, I'll have to say when I say the word like YouTube guru, I do it with quotation marks <laughs> and, and rolling my eyes. I mean, the truth is we're all learning and it changes yeah. every single day. Oh, you so, are so right. Yeah. You know, even though we have a lot of past success and, you know, we've kicked butt on YouTube, quite honestly. <laughs> we've had um, our book kicked by YouTube sometimes as well. Absolutely. I would say that we're all learning and growing and, and I, you know, I don't take myself that serious. Yes. We know what we're doing for the most part, but we get our butt kicked on a daily, just like everyone else. Yeah, and to confirm that, just search for What's Wrong With Jack Black's channel and you'll find <laughs> out where we didn't quite get it so right. All right, so channel audit rules. There is a link in the video description. If you fill that out, uh, I'm going to be looking at uh, adding some new channels to audit throughout this live stream, so you're not too late yet. Uh, do not ask for a review or audit in a live chat because we're simply not looking at it and our moderators may put you in timeout. Super chats, while very welcome, do not guarantee a review because, again, we don't want to put a paid wall behind the audits that we do here on this live stream. Apologies in advance if we can't review your channel this week. We are now up to 98 submissions already and we've not even started yet so uh, that might be a record before we've even audited a channel. And uh, Jeremy, as always, uh, how do you uh, sort of phrase this to apologize if we can't audit the channel? Yeah, I just, instead of being kind of angry with us <laughs> if we don't get to your channel, Take our philosophies and apply them to your channel when we're do auditing someone else's channel. And I promise you, you're going to internalize the way we do these audits and you're going to get a lot better. So take these philosophies. In this case, we're going today, we're going to use our seven rules that we talked about to audit and take these concepts in your head and in chat, audit with us, tell us your thoughts <laughs> And you'll be able to do this in your sleep eventually. If you know you hear us do this for 20, 30 audits, then you're going to be able to do this for others and yourself. And you're honestly going to be better if, if you just internalize it and use it yourself. And if you cannot or you're, we don't have time to audit your channel today, if you download the vidIQ Chrome extension, we have this wonderful channel audit tool, which is like your 24-7 YouTube consultant. This is what currently our uh, channel audit looks like. We're doing pretty well uh, in the last uh, month with lots of views coming in from our PewDiePie versus T-Series content. That's us experimenting, as Jerry mentioned earlier. But yeah, you can get all of this information about what you're doing right on your channel, what you're doing wrong on your channel, and how to fix small errors. Like I keep forgetting to add end screens to live streams and I really do need to fix that. This is free to download. There are some paid aspects to it, but you get a lot of this for free if you just download the vidIQ, VidIQ Chrome extension and there is a link in the description. Just a couple more things. Uh, even if your channel is not uh, selected, as Jeremy said, like 75, 80% of the uh, advice still applies to you. Our opinions are based off of first impressions. So sometimes we get it wrong. We're trying to work out what a channel's about and we, we're just not familiar with a topic and we go off on a tangent which is a bit wrong. We do apologize in advance for that. And as I said at the very beginning, the advice given is from our experience on the platform. 
doesn't always work for every single channel. However, if you know what the sort of general guidance and rules are, then don't be afraid to break it if you think your channel can create a whole new space on YouTube. And without further ado, Jeremy, I think it's now time to uh, get into this channel audit stuff. So I'm just going to click some buttons here, which will allow Jeremy to see my screen. Jeremy, please confirm that you can see the screen there. Yep. He can, okay, and if I just press uh, that button, which brings us onto channel audits. I'm going to let Jeremy lead with this one because I think this is a fascinating channel, which uh, I think covers a lot of the things that the uh, channel is doing right as opposed to mistakes they are making. So Jeremy, take it away here with Epic Cardboard Props, channel with 500 subscribers. What have we got going on here? All right, well... First off, I love the Star Wars theme without saying it. Uh, you know, there's a lot of different stuff, but the the banner, I would say that is a, it's a little too busy. Mm -hmm. I can't really quickly in two or three seconds understand what the channel's about and why it's that matters to me. Probably this sense a bit that needs fixing, doesn't it? Absolutely. <laughs> yeah. Another thing is, I would say, uh, you know, we're going to use our seven rules uh, to audit today. And there does seem to be a lot of focus. The focus I seems, agree. Yeah. Uh, we can see what the focus is here straight away, can't we? And I love that. And there also seems to be a lot of value because you, he's teaching people how to make cardboard props yep. out of cool stuff, you know, the Mocking Jay and Star Trek and Star Wars. So um, the thumbnails are pretty dang awesome and they're very, uh, they're very consistent and a lot of good YouTuber face there. So I think the thumbnails are phenomenal. Yeah. Um, there seems to be a reason to watch because if you want to make cardboard props, then it's pretty clear what this is. Uh, the thumbnails have a lot of personality, you know, again, you don't always have to do the YouTuber face, but it does help with clickability. Um, the storytelling seems now we on first impressions, we may not know much about the storytelling, but um, it looks like he probably is is doing a three part story. Who knows? Shall we click then, on one video and just watch the yeah, first 15 seconds? That. Yeah, let's go for how to make a dark night Batmobile. Hey, folks, today I'm going to show you how I made this the Tumblr from the Dark Knights movies using only this. I know I'm crazy, but it's that yeah, definitely teasing. Okay, this is what you're going to make. That, this that is, is how perfect, you're make isn't it? it? Yeah. I love that. Yeah, especially just showing two Amazon boxes. It's like, wow, you can make that from just this. I think that's a real draw there. So tick the box on the uh, first part of the storytelling there. Yeah, and one thing you may want to experiment with at the. Um, next week or something is to remove your face and put it like Amazon box there. Interesting. Yeah. And just to see, you know, and then have an arrow pointing from Be the box. Yeah. To, before and after. Yeah. I yeah. love that idea. Yeah. So like half of the thumbnail would be the thing. And the other half would just be like a box with an arrow pointing to the thing. And in this particular case, it may actually help to focus on the hero of the image, which is the thing you're creating versus yourself. Now I would keep yourself in a lot of these thumbnails, but in this particular case, it may make sense to not show you. Some final points here. Uh, I, I always look at this as a channel that's really healthy. 500 subscribers and look at the view counts. They're all either very similar to the number of subscribers or exceed it, which means that YouTube is sharing their content beyond their subscriber pace, which is brilliant. I've got one suggestion I want to make to you, Epic Cardboard Props, is your trend following fame hacking, however you want to call it, in that you're using popular culture to link to a DIY craft, which is awesome. I just think you could be more relevant. For example, the Avengers is coming up in the next few weeks. If you were able to make a Captain America shield out of cardboard or something from that film, can you imagine the potential? Because people are going to be searching for that keyword phrase, the Avengers Endgame, in the next couple of weeks. So far, you're just um, looking at... Um, popular culture generally, Star Wars, Batman, none of those are what you would say like trending in vogue right now. Perhaps at the end of the year when a new Star Wars video uh, film comes out, you could do something on a lightsaber. But I think that's a one area where you may be able to just get that viral video which 
sees you have thousands of views, tens of thousands of views, and then you can draw on that uh, for the rest of your content. I think there's definitely potential for a viral video over here, isn't there, Jeremy? Like, if if one, if like a news outlet picks up on something that they do on the Avengers and shares it, that could really launch his channel into the stratosphere. Yeah, I, I, I definitely recommend really writing trends with this channel. For example, you may want literally to make a, a PewDiePie out of cardboard or a T-Series out of cardboard. <laughs> that is, yeah, I mean, like making a 100 million subscriber cardboard subscriber award. How's yeah, that for an idea as well? That, it's, yeah. it's phenomenal. And, you know, chasing trends when you you have a channel like this could actually be really cool. Also, a lot of people watch like ASMR and building stuff that mm. will never like my young daughter was watching like drywall installation the other day. And I'm like, what are you doing? And she's like, I don't know. It's just satisfying to watch people put up drywall. I'm okay. That's weird. So a lot of people are going to watch your videos that never pick up a piece of cardboard and try to make something with it. All right then, so that is Epic Cardboard Props. We've spent a little bit of time on this channel, but I think there's a lot of awesome stuff going on in this ch channel. This a is a 100,000 subscriber channel it, right here. Yeah, absolutely, yeah. I, this is this One is of the best we've stuff. ever audited, would you for agree? The, uh, for the size of its channel, absolutely, yeah. I think all the fundamentals are in place there, just some tweaks to the strategies to find that one viral video. And we've already got one here, which has got 7,500 subscribers from four, the Avengers. So that's already a bit of a clue for you there. Uh, so good luck with your channel. Uh, now let's move on to the next one, which is going to be uh, Chief Jack. And the reason I chose this channel early on, the gaming channel, is because I'm going to ask you a question here. Geometry Rush... Fortnite Battle Royale, two very different games. So the question we're going to um, pitch to you here is, what is your focus? Is it one or the other? And the simple way I would look at this is look at your um, Geometry Jazz videos and your Fortnite videos and determine which one's getting the most views and then focus on that uh, for a f the foreseeable future. I can't think of any better way to um, talk about that. And Another thing is, like, when you're moving from uh, topics that are completely detached, such as the PewDiePie one here, which, yes, no, nothing wrong with trying to chase that trend, but look at how the views dipped off versus your other ones. It looks to be one of the lowest performing there in particular. Uh, any other thoughts there, Jeremy? Or, like, do we do we stop at that first question? Is, no, I would what say... What is your focus going to be? Sort by most viewed, and we're going to tell him his answer. <laughs> All right, yeah. Jeremy here, you're so right. Why didn't I do this to begin with? <laughs> Uh, so yeah, you're right. It's Geometry Dash. That, those of all the videos again, the most views, and the first Fortnite one getting views is. Oh, I can't really see a Fortnite one there. Maybe yeah, I can't see a Fortnite one. I guess the question might uh, the argument from the video creator might be, well, Geometry Dash is a two three year old game. I need to move on to something uh, new. All right, if you're going to do that, then you've got to move completely away with it, uh, away from that topic. Uh, we've had some questions recently from channels like I'm pivoting onto a new uh, topic now and I'm losing lots of su subscribers. How do I stop that? I think the answer is you can't. It's like a TV channel, a TV show. Imagine it's like uh, you're watching Friends and then for one week, none of the actual Friends characters are in there. They're all from Will and Grace. Now, it's kind of maybe a similar topic, but it's a completely different show. How are people going to react to that? A lot of people are going to switch off. Uh, so, I think, can I yeah, talk on this real quick because yeah, I go ahead, yeah. just did this. So, I, oh, I absolutely, yeah, Jeremy. Three weeks ago, took a, a, my YouTube channel, my personal channel. I was talking about YouTube advice and stuff for a little bit. I, honestly, the truth is, I never really did anything with my channel. I just cup, put up a few videos a year just to experiment and multivariant test and do nerd stuff. But now my channel in the last three weeks went from YouTube advice to skateboarding. You cannot be diff more different than that, yeah, right? Yeah. So um, honestly, I lost a few hundred subscribers, but I gained four or 500. Yeah. So, and the reason I gained four or 500 is because I really focused in on a particular type of skateboarding audience and they dug it. I mean, I have, you know, in the last three or four weeks, what, almost 30,000 views? Yeah, some 10,000 views videos, one here with nearly 1,000 views. And 17,000 there. So um, I do not recommend switching your completely your focus, but I did it. 
I do not regret it. My subscribers ultimately are a few hundred more than I started with three, four weeks ago, even though I lost hundreds of subscribers. And the truth is it can be done. I promise you that two, three years from now, this will be a hundred thousand subscriber channel, but it's going to take a lot of work and it's a lot harder to start. You know, it's almost easier to start from scratch. And if we're going to do a very quick audit on uh, Jeremy's channel, he needs to fix the download thumbnail cheat sheet there. And uh, <laughs> yeah, I think maybe uh, you may need to update your channel name. But those are all decisions, Jeremy, you need to make in the future. We're not auditing your channel today, of course, uh, but it was a good example to show you how pivoting is something that you have to commit to 100%. Uh, how about those last couple that. thumbnails, though? Come on. Uh, yeah, Jeremy <laughs> Jeremy likes those ones there. They're really tasty. Oh, you don't and like them. You <laughs> I, I, think, I think they're awesome. I think the backgrounds are stunning. And I like uh, because is sub, uh, skateboard ASMR whatever that is I'm sure there's a burgeoning uh, genre and interest in that I think the sound waves really tell a good story in the thumbnails all right folks shall we move on I think we shall uh, we're going to look at uh, deaf mute and I'm purposely going to let Jeremy lead on this one even though it is a gaming channel uh, what are your thoughts here on uh, a really new channel um, let's see how old they are uh, so they're pushing out a lot of content and it looks as if they are now focused on this particular game. All right. So focus. Do we have focus here? I think we do. And the reason I say that is because uh, on every thumbnail, I'm seeing satisfactory. And uh, we yep. talked about this game like a couple of weeks ago. So I think it's uh, in vogue and trending. And this video creator is certainly pushing out a lot of videos, like 10 in the last week or so. Awesome. So, all right, cool. So we got that and value. Um, by the way, what is up with deaf mute? Is this person deaf or mute? It's an interesting question. We can uh, check in the description. A lot of uh, people are s basically talking about this in the comments. So Okay, so he doesn't he doesn't uh, uh, advertise that fact in the description. Um, but if that, I mean, yeah, this is like first impressions now. We're just working off of the information we have. And is deaf mute something that's really significant, or is it just a catchy uh, name that you've chosen for your videos? If it is, then that is your unique selling point, isn't it, Jeremy? And that should be uh, something that's quite prominent in the thumbnails and the titles. But we don't know if that's the case. Yeah, yeah, we just really don't know. So we're going to move on. Reason to click. Um, they've got the arrows. So yep. that is, you know, interesting. And, and you don't really know what they're looking at. So there might be a reason to click there. Uh, personality, I really don't see the person. So I guess we'd have to click on that to see the quality storytelling and uh, personality. Do you want to click on a video real quick? Sure, let's have a quick look. The thumbnails are great, hey guys, by the way. I mean, mean they're, I'm you know, you the only thing I would say is they're like most successful gaming thumbnails. So guys, you got your factory up and going. You're making iron plates. You're producing stuff. You're progressing through. So it looks like uh, it's just a screen recording and maybe focusing on a particular thing within the game in every video. Uh, I think the one thing I would say is that give the reason to click. In terms of a thumbnail, sometimes it's a little unclear what we should be clicking at. And like I can see the red arrows, but I'm never quite sure what they're pointing at in, right. in some of these. Like this, I think the spider one is a good example, but the problem is that the spider is so dark in the thumbnail that it's just impossible to pick out. So that's why you'd want to be cutting out the spider, maybe putting a colorful background in the, a colorful background on so it contrasts um, nicely. But yeah, I, I'm, I'm not 100% on the reason to click uh, in, in some of these. I think, for example, this is a better thumbnail. Like we've got a much more focused character in front here. Um, but then the title doesn't really tell us anything. I did things. And then I don't know how that links to a person with a screw through his head, maybe. Again, losing context because I've never played the game. But yeah, I think we're, we're on to like stage two, are we here? The channel has a focus. But why should I be clicking on these thumbnails and vid, um, titles? And generally, they're of a good quality, but 
they're not telling the best story in the world, I think, if you, and, you agree with that. I do. I agree with that. I agree with the reason to click. Even, the arrows don't visually seem to be pointing anywhere. I don't know what they're pointing to. I, I just, maybe I'm old, but I can't tell. And then the quality seems good, but I don't honestly see a, a unique value proposition compared to other games. You know what, Jeremy? I'm having deja vu. I think we audited this channel potentially two weeks ago because I remember <laughs> that thumbnail. I yeah. remember saying how good that thumbnail was. So I You're think right. I think we've audited this channel twice in two weeks. So uh, I think we'll move swift, swift loan, but you get the idea of where we're thinking you may be making mistakes. All right, this one here, our... As always, we uh, audit a fishing channel because one always comes up every single week. And this one is Ryak, 3,000 subscribers for this channel. Uh, what is the focus here? Fishing. But is there anything beyond fishing? Yeah, if you go uh, back up to the banner, yeah. uh, I, I will say that it's kayak fishing, but I really didn't see that from the banner. Mm -hmm. So I would actually have you in a kayak like... right really zoomed far away so that you, the kayak yourself and a fish can all be in the banner at the same time. Even though I see fishing specifically to kayak fishing, I didn't see that yep. in your logo or your banner very easily. I do see that you're in a kayak on the left hand one, but it's not clear enough to see in a couple of seconds. So I would have a kayak in the banner as well. And then the fourth image on the top row is a phenomenal, this trout, that's a phenomenal thumbnail. I basically am gonna recommend that philosophy for all of your thumbnails. Also the best trout lures on the second row first uh, video, phenomenal thumbnail. So I, I would recommend that style for all of your thumbnails. The general rule of thumb in the fishing uh, video topic is have an image of, of the catch that's probably going to be be the payoff at the end of a video, but you want to see that tease in the thumbnail, don't you? As as yeah. shown in a couple of examples, um, and so if, showing what you use the bait or the technique yeah. used to to get the fish is really important as well. So this one right here, which is like a, an intriguing title, base fishing with chocolate milk. This is an example where the, the title's okay, but maybe the the imagery isn't big enough. Like maybe you need to just make a decision on we're going to have a big carton of chocolate milk and a big fish uh, on either side to help tell the story there yeah in that case you do there are going to be times where you don't want to be in the image yeah uh, so, and i was just looking is there any let's sort by most popular and uh, are there any sort of common themes in the most popular videos all right so some of these are very old which makes it a little more difficult to identify uh, what might be really popular now uh, it looks as if you are you had some momentum a couple of years ago, but whether you took a break or the algorithm changed, it just hasn't benefited you. Because there's some videos here with thousands of views. Uh, so maybe we should go back to the most recent ones and see which ones are performing the best here. Uh, so mostly in the triple digits, occasionally some in the thousands uh, here and there. Um, so... I think in terms of what is your focus, this video creator is probably going to need to group these videos together and say, well, this was a tutorial on how to uh, tie a knot. This one was a tutorial on how to catch a certain type of fish or this video is a certain type of bait. Sort of create silos and decide which one is really doing well for the channel and then focus on that topic for a series of videos. Would that sound like a fairly logical way to look at it, Jeremy? Yeah, going back to my two inches uh, yeah. wide and a mile deep philosophy. Um, one thing I would say that this channel is missing the most of is search intent plus the passion. So, mm. you know, how to kayak fish, you know, kayak fishing, you know, redfish, or just, it doesn't seem like from what I'm seeing that a lot of the videos have a good blend of the word kayak fishing plus the words people are searching for. So for example, Central Coast Kayak Fishing, end of 2018, bring on 2019, I would probably say something like um, kayak fishing in 2019. There you go, boom. 
Guys, I am pumped here. We're having a really good uh, channel audit session. So what I'm going to do now is take a quick break because I want to load up more of your channels. And uh, yeah, Jeremy, as always, I'm going to put you on radio silence for a few minutes uh, while we uh, enjoy these messages. But we will be back very soon to audit more of your channels. Stick around. We'll be back in a few moments. Does running a YouTube channel sometimes make you feel dazed and confused? Well, that's why you might need a little education. VidIQ can review your channel in seconds, 24 hours a day. It's like having our own YouTube consultant giving you all of this information. Do a YouTube search and we'll show you the stats, the value of that keyword, what's related, what's trending, what tags each video uses, and a deep dive with a single click. After research comes analysis. Our video scorecard will pick apart all the important analytics from social media to SEO and we do this for every single video on YouTube for free. And when it comes to uploading your videos, vidIQ is here to support you every step of the way with suggested keywords, our SEO score ranking, upload checklist and recommended tags boosting your content to the next level. Oh, and if you think we finished there, we haven't even started. We have dozens more tools we want to show you right now. All you need to do is download vidIQ now and let us help educate you on your YouTube journey today. And we'll be back in about 60 seconds, folks. I'm just loading up some more channels back in 60 seconds. Alrighty, we are back. I'm just going to jump straight into this with the second part of our channel audits. Jeremy, can you just confirm you can still see my screen and hear us? Yes. Okay, we are all good. By the way, folks, if you are enjoying this live stream, uh, do let us know in the live chat with an emoji of some kind. Whether yeah, it's thumbs a, up. <laughs> a, f a thumbs up or sunshade or glasses or if you are that way uh, disposed, a smiley poo. Right. Okay. Jeremy, we are looking at, if I press the right button, we are looking at Hannah Garner, mental health, creativity and style. So the two questions I would be asking about this channel is, all right, there's three quite broad topics here. Is there a main one? Is there a focus within those topics? And because we see many channels similar to this, what are the unique selling points? And can we identify this from what we can see on the thumbnails and the channel banner? Yeah, I don't know the answer to that. Like just quickly, you know, within a few seconds. Yeah, so let's um, so let's have a look at the titles here. How to build your MUA kit, makeup artist kit, easy print DIY, vision board, everyday makeup tutorials, my closet tour, and new Depop items. How many different topics would you say that we've looked at there in five videos? Three yeah, or four? I would say five, probably. So you're, you're saying that each video may be completely... Um, I, I would. Mean, yeah, from a video creator's point of view, they can kind of make sense of how each of these topics link together. But from our perspective, we generally want to see one thing uh, on a channel consistently, don't we? And that's maybe what we're missing here. And beauty alone, I would yeah. just do, you know, eyelashes or just, you know, makeup. Or uh, The truth is it's just so competitive at this point. I will say looking at this channel visually, I think this is a beauty artist or a makeup um, yep. channel. Uh, everything looks great. The thumbnails look great. You know, it definitely has that great like look to a beauty channel, even though the thumbnails are dark, I think it just kind of works. Um, 
I picked out this one in particular as quite a nice one. Absolutely. Uh, I think it could be, uh, you could maybe even blow up the face even more here, uh, potentially try and get rid of that background uh, to really emphasize focus on the face. But that's a good example of a good thumbnail. Absolutely. So again, one idea I have for you is to make a bigger theme for the channel. And then that theme might be able to hold, you know, glamour and makeup and, and, and whatever else that you're doing. So let's say it was mommy vlogging or, you know, I, I don't yeah, know, yeah. obviously if you're a mom or not, but um, my point is if you could tie this into some type of lifestyle or a unique reason that makes you, you, or, um, it could even be something like confidence, you know, with mental illness and, and things like that. Uh, women confidence, you know, motivation. There could be a way to be able to do makeup tutorials for confidence with women, you know, with, with disabilities or mental health issues. Um, so there is a way to group all of this stuff together into a bigger category that people are searching for. Um, an example would be Gillette about five years ago, they did a campaign of hundreds of videos on how to shave. They were talking about how to shave your head and your beard and your goatee and your back. And, you know, they talked about all forms of shaving, but they did it with the the phrase of how to shave. So my question to this channel is what is that bigger category that you can group all these videos together? I think there's a way to do it. I just don't know exactly what that would be. Yeah, I've just quickly sort of by the most popular videos and the ones that are popping out are whole videos. They, they you got a couple there, but it generally seems to be mental health, I would say. Uh, it seems to be the, the, the more predominant uh, content and or I think, are you interviewing maybe popular YouTubers as well in some of these? Uh, like Meg from Woman's Hood and uh, Hannah Garner, or is that, oh, sorry, that's an introduction to you, that's, that's your intro. Uh, so, yeah, again, first impressions, still trying to pick things up, but maybe whole videos and or mental health videos seem to be the ones that bring in, uh, seem to be more popular with your audience, but I think that's going to require a bit of a deep research uh, by you and as well as following Jeremy's advice. Next channel we are going to look at is Simply Card Making by Laura Beard, if that's how I pronounce your uh, name, 22,000 sub subscribers. So congratulations there on the success of your channel already. Uh, so it's simply card making. Seems like you've got a good focus there. Yeah, um, so there's focus. Yeah. Is there value? Looks to be, I would say, uh, from the uh, from the videos. The, Reason the, to click. Now, that's where I'm going to say there's probably some tweaks here that could maybe improve things. I would say some of these thumbnails maybe look a little busy. Uh, I don't know if you ag agree with that, Jeremy. Um, for example, uh, this one. I don't know what makes me click on that per se, whereas this one, I think the imagery is a little more defined. Um, so I think there may be some thumbnail tweaks that could be done. Sometimes the hero is in the thumbnail as well. Um, what are your thoughts? I would say no text. Okay, so text seems to be the thing that you're targeting is maybe getting rid of. Yeah, it's it, yeah, and, it varies and focus quite a lot. On the a lot thing. Of it, yeah. So organizational yeah. tips focus on an organized desk, or for example, um, die cut techniques focus on actually die cutting something and showing the paper getting embossed and you know like actually pushing through. Um, organizational hacks, how to store cardstock making because of the text, I actually can't see what that is. Right, so yeah. focus on the visuals of the solution you're providing and remove all the text. And I honestly think people will have a reason. Another thing I recommend is putting an arrow to the thing that you're showing. Yeah, I was looking at this one in particular. I'm thinking affiliate marketing. How would how would it make how could we make this thumbnail more popular? Or, or like what are the trigger points for perhaps affiliate marketing? And that mine would be money. So whether it's a, like a bundle of cash or a dollar sign that you have an arrow pointing to, uh, whereas 
other than the text, I just can't work out what that thumbnail's about uh, at all. Uh, but yeah, I think you're absolutely right there, Jeremy. I just wanted to sort by most popular here because I want to know if there's a particular video that's bringing in a lot of views for this channel. As that kind of happens with a educational how-to channel, not so much. There's one here with 150,000 subscribers, but I wouldn't say that's bringing in all of your views. And it was from a while ago, uh, and it looks as if most of your videos were from a while ago. So. Maybe I will things. say I will say though that go back to the top those first four thumbnails are exactly what I'm talking about mm. no text showing what the thing is about those those first those those top three or four uh, videos to me have the best thumbnails. Uh, and they could certainly be tweaked a little more to, to improve. So, so maybe you want to go back to to these uh, thumbnails and, uh, well, I don't. I'm maybe changing a good thing is probably not the best idea, but using those as your primary. Yeah, you're absolutely right, right here, Jeremy. I've just noticed the first, uh, what, seven out of the, nine out of the first 10 videos have absolutely no text. Uh, and most of the more most popular videos have no text as well. So yeah, Simply Card Making with uh, Laurel Beard, if I've uh, said your name right there. I think that's thumbnails, giving a reason to click. That's what you want to be uh, focusing on. All right, uh, Cyberpunk is the channel banner. I'm guessing that's the name of the game and your channel name. Jeremy, I'll, I'll, I'll let this leave this one to you. What's the channel called? Um, Cause... <laughs> Yeah, I'm not going to try. Kazulski, that's how yeah. I, what I'm going for. Anyway, 7,000 subscribers. I think this channel has uber focus on this particular game, it looks like, which is brilliant. Is it a game? Folks, help us out in the chat. Uh, Cyberpunk, uh, it's a, it's a role-playing game. So, yes, your focus is on this game. And we cover a lot of gaming channels, and we've never seen anybody covering the game Cyberpunk 20. 2077. So I think you've certainly got your focus down, which is awesome. Thumbnails, Jeremy, got any thoughts there? I love the thumbnails. Um, and, you know, just keep your text small like you're doing. Um, I would say that like the yellow text, I would, I would rather see it on the very bottom left hand mm -hmm. side so that I can see more of the samurai, more of red, more of, you know, the, the people I would also, like you have on the red thumbnail, I would always make the faces that big if you can. Yeah. Um, and that red thumbnail is perfect because the red is not covering the person's face. So there's yeah. a lot of reasons to click. Um, another thing I would say about the thumbnails is, again, when possible, try to give someone a reason to click. Make it action-oriented or, or something happening. Um, have an arrow. Some Give me a reason to click on this thumbnail but they are phenomenal. And for the size, um, so there's, how, what's the size of the channel? So the channel size is seven and a half thousand subscribers. I'm just noticing something here their as well. Vi their views are huge. Yeah, the there's an interesting question here because if you notice like two or three months ago, they were getting tens of thousands of views. Uh, so they had a bit, and then before that, maybe 5,000 views or less. But then in the last month, uh, we're starting to maybe tail off a little bit. So is there a little bit of a worry here that maybe the um, the video game is losing interest or there might be a, a possible pivot question? That's going to be a really tough one considering the, the supreme focus this channel has. But And Rob, can yeah. we show the audience a cool tool? Go to click on, uh, just type in Cyberpunk on search and hit enter. Uh, 27, I'll include that as well. Yeah, that's fine. That's okay, yeah. And then over on the right-hand side, we have our vidIQ tool here. Yeah. And we are showing basically the quality score. It seems right now that the competition, the search volume is very high and the competition yeah. is relatively low. So this seems to be like a really good um, title. There are in other aspects of like, for example, if you clicked on, can you click on the term cyberpunk uh, down below? Were you meaning like that to get the keyword inspector? Yeah, or, yeah. the keyword inspector. So now you can see interest over time. 
keeps spiking. That's probably when there was like releasing maybe beta versions right. or like the, the the game release and so on. So this is where you would find that answer normally, yeah. but the spikes are kind of making it hard. So yeah, and in the last thirty days, it's kind of average, uh, not spiking really too much, but then again, not dropping too much. But you'll want to keep an eye on this because yeah. when that game starts like taking a nosedive, you'll want to start doing another game. Yeah, I'm, I'm just doing this. Uh, something I always do now with video games is I always look at this frames per second boost because it seems to be something that's really interesting for a lot of channels to do this type of thing on, uh, especially PC games. But yeah. it doesn't look as if it's a particular opportunity uh, to capitalize there. So I think this channel is doing everything right at the moment, but uh, there may be some tough decisions in the future uh, for this channel. Uh, depending on, I can't get it to go back to the page. This also seems time? to be a relatively old game. Yeah, it's going to be an interesting one for this channel, uh, but I think you're doing a lot of things right at the moment. Just uh, like as all as with all gaming channels, when do you take, because we're looking at another thing here with common mistakes is, is there enough personality in your content so that you can potentially take your audience on a journey uh, later on? So uh, something to consider there. But I think generally speaking, as a gaming channel, this is a good template for other video creators to look at, isn't it, Jeremy? Certainly in terms of how they're presenting their content to their audience. Absolutely. All right, uh, next channel is West Coast Cajun Cuisine. Uh, so fairly uh, focused niche topic there. Jeremy, what do we think about this channel? I think we've got the focus there. Yeah, um, when I look at volume. the banner, I want to see Cajun Cuisine. Yeah. And maybe you in a chef's coat or something like talking about it. I, wanted, I want to experience what your channel is about in your banner. I want in three seconds to know, oh, Cajun cuisine that looks really yummy. This must be the chef. Yeah. Um, the thumbnails are phenomenal. What I don't, what I think can be improved, is some type of branding. Um, I, I see. Okay, let me rephrase that. I see the branding on the left hand side, but I don't yep. see it. Does that make any sense? So, like, because it's black, I don't actually visually see it very well. And, and, and the text is in, impossible to read as well. Right. Yeah. So I would honestly remove the text altogether and make the three leaf thing bigger, and mm. then make the black a different color to make it stand out. Because right now, even though it's there, it's really not able to be seen because a lot of your thumbnails are on black or dark backgrounds. I think that the thumbnails could be improved a little bit, maybe zooming in a little bit more or sharpening the image or adding a little more punch vibrancy to the colors potentially in some of these. Jeremy, would you agree? I like, I agree that there is some good thumbnails here, but compared to the competition, how can you make these potentially stand out? Yeah. And one recommendation I would have is to type in like Cajun food on, you know, on YouTube and see what's the top five rankings. I guarantee you that the word Cajun food will bring up thumbnails that are amazing. Okay, let's do that. Folks, we're going to take an this exploration. Guarantee. Cajun food uh, exploration. I've got to be honest, Jeremy, I don't think they're that good. I mean, that, I, I think that one's a pretty powerful uh, thumbnail. Yeah, they're bad. I was completely wrong. <laughs> so, but, but, uh, but that just is an opportunity there, isn't it? It's like, I can make better thumbnails than that. Uh, yeah. I think that's, I think that's uh, definitely where you should start. Now, one thing I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to suggest here is that I don't think this video creator is doing enough keyword research. And the only w reason I say that is because these titles seem very formulaic. It's just the uh, meal that's presented. So if I click on one of these videos, I'm just intrigued to know if there's any video tags. Oh, there are video tags. So, I was, so there is some research going on in there. But I don't find these titles particularly enticing. Do you, uh, w would you agree with that? There's, there seems to be something missing in a lot of these. Yeah, I mean... Look, it's a blend of what people are searching for and a reason to click. So, yeah. for example, Cajun smoked chicken. The reason I think it only has 16 views is type in Cajun smoked chicken and let's see what is the first ranking. So, smoke. Um, so, you know, a lot of these are similar, but basically you want to give someone a reason to click. So, for example, I would say, 
uh, easy Cajun smoked chicken in an hour or the best, you know, give someone a reason to click. Absolutely. Okay. So that was Cajun uh, cuisine. And we wish you the best of luck. With Great your job, by the way. And we're don't want to just bash channels. We want yeah, to yeah. Celebrate your wins. You're doing sometimes, very well. Sometimes we do forget to do that, Jeremy, don't we? And this channel <laughs> with what twenty five videos uh, started this year, already cracked a hundred subscribers. So congratulations on that. Yeah, we just try and focus on what where we can. Imp- we do, sometimes we don't celebrate the wins because like you're already doing that right. So here's where you can uh, improve on that. We're going to look at uh, now technology move, and I'm going to simply uh, read off the first five uh, video titles here. Huawei P30 Pro, how to find if somebody uploads my videos, new intro tech movie, new desk setup cable management, no copyright music free download. So my question to you, technology move is, what is your focus? Is it mobile phones? Is it how to help video creators? Is it cable management? I mean, you could almost potentially create a whole channel on cable management because everybody needs to improve that. Mine is terrible after all. Uh, So definitely your focus. And that may explain why uh, with 700 subscribers, you're getting views sometimes in the like in in the 60s, like less than 10% of your potential subscribe audience. And if I go scroll down more, install SSD, Tesla, uh, graphics cards, Over the course of the last three or four months, you've jumped between maybe six or seven topics. So if a channel, if somebody's going to subscribe to your channel and then have to wait seven or eight months to get another video that's related to what they were interested in, I think that's going to be a real issue. Any more thoughts there, Jeremy, before we move on? I think that focus is definitely the issue there. Yeah, I mean, without focus, you're going to, it's going to be hard to find value. Without value, it's going to be hard to find a reason to click. Without personality, it's in in your face on a lot of your thumbnails. It's going to be hard for people to connect with you and subscribe and come back to you. And then without all of those things, it's going to be hard to tell a good story um, or have a unique selling point. Just sorting by most popular because I'm wondering. Yeah, okay. So a couple of videos here that got you lots of views. Like uh, presumably, I'm guessing a lot of your subscribers came from maybe these two videos here. Do you look? Do you niche down into one of those topics and just either talk, uh, go into full detail about the GTX 1050 or the Huawei P20 Lite when it was released? Opportunity might have passed now because uh, in technology, uh, news moves very quickly. Uh, so those potentially are your focus rather than all the other things that you're trying to cover. And Jeremy, we are looking at Broad One C15 T3R. Is this even a real channel? This is a bit curious. So it's got some gaming stuff. It's got some fitness stuff. Uh, go, where, where do we go with this channel? It's really confusing to me. Yeah, so it's very simple. We're glad you're creating content. And you've obviously, how long have they been doing uh, YouTube? For about a about year, a year? I'd say. About a year. So, you know, one of the hardest things is turning on the camera and just becoming a YouTuber. It's really difficult. I mean, from learning graphic design to thumbnails to the banner and video editing. I mean, honestly, anyone can take an awesome, you know, Instagram or Snapchat picture or video, right? Anyone can use Facebook, but YouTube is kind of the last frontier in in digital marketing and, and social media. That's actually difficult. So it's really awesome that you're on the platform. Now we just want you to take our seven steps we've talked about today. We want you to get a focus. We want you to create value, give someone a reason to click on your thumbnails and have a lot of consistency on your thumbnails, put personality into it. Make sure your face is on most of these thumbnails. Make sure you're telling great stories. Make sure you improve your quality 1% every week and get unique. Have a reason for people to watch other than what other channels are already doing. Put your personality into it. And that is your, uh, how I would describe the generic channel audit sales pitch, how to improve your channel. Folks, we're <laughs> going to take, we're going to take one more. Is, you're, you are right there, Jeremy. It's like, where do we start with this channel? We're going to start with the basics. This is what you need to do. So uh, yeah, thanks for the, for the input there. Folks, we're going to take another break. And when we come back, we're going to be doing some more audits, quick fire round, and we'll take a few of your questions. Enjoy the messages. In the meantime, we'll be right back. If your YouTube channel is stuck in a rut, maybe it's time you gave it the video. IQ boost treatment. Still not convinced? 
Here's 10 reasons why you should. VidIQ. VidIQ. VidIQ.com. With VidIQ Boost, you have complete access to one of the most powerful marketing tools on YouTube, the Channel Audit. It will show you in a snapshot what's working on your channel, what isn't working on your channel, and all of those little things like titles, tags, and end screens that you need to fix. We also take the guesswork out of search engine optimization with our keyword suggestion tools. Knowing what people are searching for means you know what to include in your titles, tags, and descriptions, all of which you can add with a single click. With our competitor tracking tool, you can follow up to 20 channels working in the same video space as you. If their content is catching fire, chances are they're doing something right and you need to add your own spin to the topic. One of our Boost exclusive tools is Bulk SEO. This analyzes content you have already published and shows you how people are finding that content and how you can improve it further with keywords you're not even using. Have vidIQ do the work for you by alerting you through email with a list of videos that are trending based on your search criteria. If you see a trend blowing up, it's time to ride that wave for massive channel growth. Want to quickly post videos natively on Facebook rather than YouTube links? Our syndication tool can do that for you in just a few easy clicks. Through subscriber analysis, you can discover what your fans do when they're not watching you. This can help you discover new video topics and channels of interest, as well as understanding when your subscribers are online, so you know the best time to publish your content. Have you ever wanted to know which channels covering similar topics to you are having viral moments, no matter how big or indeed how small the channel is? Our most viewed tool will help you uncover those hidden gems. With vidIQ Boost, you also get vidIQ Pro features as well, which include our titles, tags and descriptions translation tool, as well as the controversial keyword checker, saving you from possible demonetization flags. And while we're on the subject of upgrade banners and locked features and rocket icons you might have seen as a vidIQ free user, with vidIQ Boost, all of this goes away. You have complete access to every single one of our tools. Our support team is available and ready to answer your questions in the supported languages on screen now. Start boosting your channel today and let us educate you on your YouTube journey. All right, folks, we are back. And I don't know if you heard that on the mic, uh, but uh, Jeremy just randomly said, I'm great. That's because I asked him a question, but I my mic was muted, but Jeremy's wasn't. So, folks, everybody, Jeremy is good. Right, what we're going to do now is our usual questions and answers. You can ask us any question you want about YouTube, uh, your channel, or vidIQ. But I'm going to limit it to five minutes today because we're going to do a dedicated Q&A live stream on Thursday. Uh, we'll post out the um, schedule probably an hour before it goes live. So, folks, if you have a question now, I want you to include hashtag question in the chat and we're going to try and answer as many as we can and as soon as I see the first question I'm going to start the countdown just so that we have definitely five minutes to answer uh, the questions that you have. Yes Panther you say you put hashtag question but we also need a question after that. Uh, so here we go the first question has come up and the question comes from uh, Flamecraft. How to create a channel banner? Uh, so if you just search on YouTube, channel banner template, you will get lots of options. And if you go to canva.com, for example, that is a free service that will offer you channel banners to start creating or do YouTube searches. But it really is about just um, spending a bit of time to try and make a good channel banner and then maybe improve on it. Next question, Jeremy, what have we got? I really suck at thumbnails. Rob Wilson, what month is it at vidIQ? It is thumbnail month. We are doing a series on how to make better thumbnails. We've already done three videos on the topic, as well as all the PewDiePie stuff. So check out the channel. We've got a playlist, how to make better thumbnails, and we'll be making more videos throughout this month. Next question is from The King. Clickbait titles, how to make something interesting without lying. Go, Jeremy. Uh, um... <laughs> <laughs> I make it interesting. I don't know. 
How do you make something interesting? Make it interesting. I don't know. Give it. Have, uh, com, uh, so the title complements the thumbnail. Give them intrigue. Like that first uh, channel that we looked at with all of the paper, um, paper, the cardboard cutouts of stuff. That was a really intriguing channel, and it made me want to click on the thumbnails. So use that as an example. And uh, the Jeremy, three E's: eyes, excitement, and emotion. There we go, Jeremy. It's, Jeremy's brain is finally engaged. <laughs> uh, so Jeremy, go on, and you ask me a question. Put me on the spot. All right. What's your take on giveaways? How much should you promote them? So you've got to be careful with giveaways because YouTube are clamping down on these uh, because they see it as a way to artificially uh, inflate your subscribers and likes. And you've also got to look at it from this point of view. People usually enter a giveaway because they want to win the giveaway and they're not really interested in your content. They're just there to grab something. So... I think probably giveaways is something you want to start doing when you build up a larger channel and you've got a really engaged community and maybe try and target those people who it's valuable for. Don't use it as a means to gain subscribers. It's almost as bad as sub for sub, I would say, in my opinion. Jeremy, I'm going to ask you this question, which is... How do we live stream like you guys? Please make a tutorial. That's, I guess that's probably a question that I need to answer. Uh, but I, we use live, we use Streamlabs, which is completely free to use, and it's just been trial and error, learning how to create sources, do all of these transitions. I bought a Stream Deck thing, which I don't know if you can see it there, but this is the thing that helps me do all of those transitions. So yeah, uh, practice, 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 and start using Streamlabs because it is free to use. But there are other services available. Great idea for making videos for you in the future, though, Rob. Yeah, absolutely. I think I should probably do a, a tutorial. So thanks for the question. Uh, Rob, why do people yeah. hide their subscriber count? Because uh, I think it's a vanity question and, and people are afraid that if somebody can see their subscriber number and say it's like 50, the viewer is going to think, oh, there's no value to be had in that channel, which is an understandable way to look at things, but my opinion has always been you should never be afraid of how many uh, subscribers you have. If people are just going to place that value on you, then they're probably not worth, in, ha, worth having as a subscriber. Uh, that's my personal opinion. Others may disagree with it. And everybody goes through this journey. Everybody started at zero. So I think celebrating how many subscribers you got is something I would do. And if it's hidden, then there's always that suspicious, suspicious suspicious question as to why they've been hidden. I almost got that word out, Jeremy, but it took a while. I'm going to ask you this question. Creative Mayhem asks, what is the recommended length for an intro? Uh, personally, I, I would do less than 15 seconds, um, but you also want the hook in there so that you give someone a, what the video is about, but a reason to keep on watching. All right, with one minute left, we're going to do a quick fire round. Gaming pros, who is more vain, Rob or Jeremy? I'm going to say Rob, <laughs> especially what uh, considering what my username is in our private uh, Slack chat right now. Uh, next question is, uh, uh, can I see another question? Tips on how to get a video to blow up. Uh, a lot of watch time and make something unique that people actually want to consume and watch. There we go for that one. And um, what's, uh, I feel this one and check out YouTube's uh, community guidelines for how to use uh, links uh, ethically and appropriately. Folks, those were our questions for this week. Thank you very much. But as I say, uh, Jeremy, and myself and perhaps a special guest are going to experiment with a live Q&A session on Thursday, probably. So stick around for that. What we're going to do now in the time that we have left is some quick audits. Uh, so I just need to press some buttons so that Jeremy can see my screen once again. Jeremy, confirm that you can see my screen. Yes. Yes, you can. Okay. And so we are going to start with the final audits. And we're going to start with this one, Jeremy. And we're going to try and keep these relatively quick. Uh, do one every, try and get through one like every 30 seconds, maybe one piece of advice. And we're starting with Canadian cannabis reviews. What can we tell the video creator here? I don't know, Rob. You live in Canada, so. <laughs> that, that is true. And I'm going to say, <laughs> cool, man. Uh, what I'm actually going to say is that you're jumping on this trend, which is awesome. Uh, it's just been legalizing cannabis uh, in Canada. God, that's like a combination of Canada and cannabis. It's just been <laughs> legalized in Canada. So I think you're going to be one of the dominant forces here. And I can already see that your views are getting, you have more views and subscribers, which is awesome. Uh, I think the thumbnails, like how can you touch up 
images of different types of cannabis. I've got no idea, but they look generally good. Maybe you want to include the, the I mean, you've got a hashtag, which is quite interesting considering it's a cannabis channel. Is there something, is there a way that you could play with that um, concept? Uh, but yeah, I think you've started a channel, which is awesome. You're jumping on a what's going to be a very big news uh, story, certainly in Canada and in countries in the future. Anything else to add there, Jeremy? I think this channel's got it nailed on, to be honest. I just, I just think that the thumbnails are boring. Um, Ooh, controversial. I don't know. Maybe if I was really into cannabis, I may not think that way. But like, for example, maybe show the box or show something that ties in a story with this. Maybe there's a like a gold, uh, like an award that it won or, you know, something that makes it more than just every other thumbnail. And the final question is, but we don't know the answer, is what is OCS Review? I don't know how that's attached to the channel uh, or what. So I don't know if people are searching for that word either. So something to consider. But generally speaking, I think you've got a channel that could get tens of thousands of subscribers, if not more. All right, Bushcraft Padawan, uh, Jeremy, we looked at this channel before, uh, but the video creator has been saying that they've been struggling a little bit with views starting to uh, fall down a little bit. I mean... Uh, there doesn't seem to be anything necessarily wrong with the content and the thumbnails, which continue to improve. So, is, is it's the is, titles? Oh, the titles. Okay, so it Jeremy, is the titles. please explain. Because, for example, how to make DIY bushcraft jungle chair. That people aren't searching for that. So, really understand what people are searching for within this genre, and then go make more. Rob, click sort by most viewed real quick. Yes, and sir. And make sure. Bushcraft Padawan that you are using the channel audit tool often figure out what your top videos have been and go do more videos similar to that. Someone asked recently in the comments, how do I make videos similar, but not the same? Well, you figure out the, the common denominators that made the video work well, but you do a different topic. So for example, lightweight, low bulk, overnight bushcraft gift, it may be the overnight part. It may be the low bulk. Who knows what that is, but experiment with, with new videos on different types of overnight um, kits, one low bulk and one overnight. I'm not sure, you know, I'm not sure exactly what you do there, but you hopefully get yeah. my point. There are always ways to look at a topic in a different uh, angle. My, for example, I made my channel through one thing, how to record your iPhone screen, and I did hundreds of videos on that. I know it sounds ridiculous, but I made myself the authority and like, at the end of it, I was getting maybe 10 to 20,000 views on just that one topic, so it can be done. Uh, so hope, hopefully you find that useful, a Bushcraft Padawan, in terms of maybe tweaking your, twi uh, <laughs> tweaking your twitles. Wow, <laughs> tweaking your titles. <laughs> Uh, next channel, Wild Wolves. I think this is very simple. I can see in the channel banner, Minecraft, Fortnite, Battlegrounds. What is your channel focus? And then I look at the thumbnails. What is going on here with Tuber Simulator? Oh, that's a game, isn't it? I think from PewDiePie. Oh but I think, it, yeah. I think it needs to be a bit of a... Uh, you know what? Once our boss actually suggested that I start doing live streams where I play Tuber Simulator. Uh, if, folks, if you want me to do that, uh, I've got my CEO's authorization to do that. To let us know in the comments, but I think uh, trying to build our own actual real life channel would be uh, time <laughs> better spent. All right, so yeah, channel focus. Uh, what is your channel about? Because, uh, and I think the thumbnails probably need a little bit of work there. Would you agree, Jeremy? Yeah, just put your face there, give people a reason to click, um, understand what the focus is. Um, maybe in this particular case, a picture of what you're fake YouTube channel looks like for Tube <laughs> yeah. Simulator. Uh, yeah, uh, great idea, yeah. Um, All right. But yeah, more visuals. <laughs> I cut Jeremy off there, but we move on to the next channel. Uh, Ryan the Slayer. This again looks like a gaming channel. Uh, so I'm going to look at the games. Fallout 4, Skyrim, 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 Fallout 4. So you're sort of looking at two different games there. And I would say uh, just very quickly looking at your view counts, um, oh, I thought it was one or the other, but it's difficult to say. I mean, yeah, it's, it looks like these are the two games that you own, and so you're focusing on them, which is not necessarily a bad idea, but I don't know. 
is it a good idea to maybe just focus on one of these games for the time being? Sort and like sort by the most popular. Which one's really bringing in views? Let's see. Uh, no, that's something completely different from a couple of years ago. So difficult to say. I think yeah, focus and a reason to click. Would you say there, Jeremy, on this and like yeah. keyword yeah. research? Yeah, focus on keyword research. You know, do just a few series, not a whole bunch of games. And Cons- uh, I was going to say consistency as well. Yeah. If you look at the top, if you look at these five thumbnails, because of the changing of the font, you wouldn't be able to necessarily immediately tell that they're all from the same channel. Yeah, they look like five different channels for sure. Tech box, Jeremy. I'll let you lead on this one. That's a very minimalist channel banner. I will say from a graphic designer's perspective, I love the banner, but from a YouTube strategy perspective, I don't think people in three seconds will know what your channel is about and why that matters to them. So I would have a branding statement of, you know, what you do um, and why that matters to me. And, but I do like the logo and I like the simplicity of it. Hopefully you're a coder because that's what it kind of seems like to me. I'm not sure. Um, But yeah, I, I I would say that this is more like a, a vlog than a YouTube channel. Uh, well, obviously, it looks like there's, some, there's some text. It looks like there was some text stuff here before Christmas, right? And there's still a bit of text stuff, but I I would also say that I don't know you disillusioned with YouTube a little bit text box because your output has severely reduced in the last couple of weeks. Like you've only done two videos in the last three months so maybe getting back on the the youtube horse so to speak and if it is a tech channel yeah like you say jeremy is it a coding channel or a tech channel looks to me like it's a mobile phone tech channel to me generally um so yeah making sure that there's a statement in there within that channel we'll move on here tari tmm looks like a gaming channel and it's this is all you rob yeah, because it is wrestling, WWE 2K19. You're doing a, all of them live streams. Um, and again, so this is a really interesting question for small YouTubers. Are you going to get uh, people who are not subscribed to your channel to commit to watching nothing but live streams on a channel? And I think that's sometimes a, a bit of a difficult uh, proposition. So you may want to cut out the best bits from these live streams and turn them into a montage. And certainly the thumbnails need tweaking. If you look at any thumbnails regarding W... uh, Well, let's do it. Let's just have a look at some of the best thumbnails in the genre. Sorry, I'm just waffling to myself until I get the thumbnails up. I mean, look at these thumbnails uh, versus your thumbnails. And there's usually a really focus on a particular wrestler or a move. uh, And that's going to be a lot more powerful than these freeze frames from these live streams. All right, Jeremy, I focus on that one. I'm going to let you focus on this one all about gaming. Excalibur. What do you think here? Excalibur K. Yeah, I would just say you, you got to focus on just a couple of games. It looks like you're doing a whole bunch of games. Every yeah. one of your thumbnails looks like it's all from different channels. So you need to find a way to make your text, your images, and your overall design similar so that it looks like you have a brand. Um, and then I would say you really need to level up your ability to have title to title. Yeah, I would agree with that. Keyword yeah. research and also a reason to click. So for example, it's back. What what is back? What are people searching for in that thing that is back? And why does that r- matter to me and give me a reason to click? All right, next channel is uh, if my bell is still working, Slavgard. Uh, this looks like an anime channel. Uh, I'm always a little uh, hesitant to make comments about anime channels because I don't know if it's your anime or you're critiquing an anime. Uh, it's difficult to say here. Uh, but it looks like your channel is generally relatively new. Uh, thumbnails look relatively okay, although sometimes I think the text is a little intrusive. I will say a lot of anime is weird, and this seems to be borderline, like, I don't know if this content's yeah. good or bad for YouTube. Um, one suggestion I would have is I did the thumbnail and YouTube strategy for Funimation, a, a YouTube channel with over 2 million subscribers. So go check yeah. out Funimation. What Funimation does is is really based on my philosophies of, of success. So it would be a good 
anime channel to look at as far as focus and, and all the things we've been talking about today. But I would say that this content, just looking at it, might yeah. not actually be suitable for YouTube. Yeah, I, I agree. So uh, I think we'll swiftly move on from that one. Uh, but if it is... Uh uh, again, that's first impressions. If it is content that's safe for YouTube, uh, we do apologize if we got that wrong. Let's channel 250 subscribers. Okay, what do we have here, Jeremy? Looks like a, a reaction, try not to laugh, prank challenges style content, you would say. Um, Tick and TikTok content. Kind yeah, of. <laughs> you like to say it's TikTok. Uh, and uh, are we looking at here maybe the... Uh, give a reason to click type of attitude like here in this thumbnail the hero is maybe not big enough in the thumbnail like make make yourself cover the entirety of this half of the image uh, so that we can see that you're smiling perhaps um, yeah i would just really yeah. look at dad jokes uh rob real <laughs> quick just type in dad jokes all right so battle dad jokes battle sorry yeah there we go Look at these thumbnails. Look how phenomenal they are. You know, the brands in there, the yeah. faces are big and you can see the expressions, eyes and excitement and emotion. Um, and they're just really good. And they even make you smile because people that, you know, being, you know, humor is contagious. So having that emotional engagement in your thumbnails, aim for this level of thumbnail and you'll do well. Boom. Oh, sorry. I've pressed a button here. Something's playing. Oh, I'm in this horrible situation where I've got a tab that's playing and I don't know which one it is. <laughs> oh, dear. Uh, I'll have to... No, I can't mute that because if I mute that, that'll mute Jeremy. Sorry, uh, whoever's channel that was, I do apologize. But that was playing a video that I, that I couldn't get out of. Sometimes it does that when you go to the video tab and it starts playing a channel trailer. So, sorry whoever that was. If you uh, send me a message, I'll try, we'll make sure to audit you next week. RJ McIntyre, a Scottish gamer here with 300 subscribers. And again, what's your channel focus? Is it Call of Duty or Apex Legends? It looks like it's Call of Duty, but I'm not sure. Uh, and I think this is one of these uh, questions of what is your unique selling point, isn't it, Jeremy? How can you yeah. uh, make your channel more clickable than others who are covering this content? Uh, you would probably do that by looking at which have been your most popular videos so far, if they are all on Call, all on call of Duty. So you haven't really had a breakout video yet. Uh, so I think it's you're in the hustle stage, trying to find out where is your niche in the Call of Duty market? And hopefully you will find that soon. Uh, but as a small channel, I think your thumbnails have potential. Maybe we need to lose a bit of text here and there, blow them up a little bit. But there's some, I think there's some nice structure and foundation, some consistency, uh, but tweaks needed here and there. Anything else, Jeremy? No, you got it. All right. And, oh, we so we've got, ah, Jeremy, I think you should feel this one because it is about web design, a UX and front end development. What are we seeing here in this channel? Yeah. First, again, I would, I would definitely put your face or something that re is re visually related on the banner. And then on the thumbnails, they're a little basic. Honestly, the uh, first thumbnail, um, mm. the very first thumbnail, I yeah. would have that phone and the UX of the design of that phone zoomed in about 80 to 90% bigger than it is now. It needs to focus on one particular feature or one part of the UI in yeah. that in that design doesn't it yeah, yeah you can't show everything and showing the whole phone makes it to a to where yeah you can't see anything basically yeah. so show, focus on one aspect of the ux or you know the way you have it now it's actually hard to see anything Interesting concept as a channel, though. It looks as if they're like critiquing, critiquing design of applications and things. And well, I think great. there may be, I think there may be a niche in there. Uh, so yeah, a good and the only thing channel. I would say is don't do use daily UI. Find out what people are searching yeah, for within yeah, UI point. and UX design, and then use the terms people are searching for. Yeah. Uh, ZM Games, another gaming channel here. This one looks to be on Fortnite. I think these are some of the best gaming thumbnails we've seen uh, today, if you if you agree with that, Jeremy. Yep. Uh, about Fortnite, so it's a typical question. Where is your particular street... Where is your particular niche, strength, or unique knowledge on Fortnite? Find that and leverage the power of it. I'll quickly sort by most popular. Is there anything that's jumping out for your channel that you've done well with in Fortnite? Uh, so you did something a year ago on a particular, I don't know, 
character or game or item and that's the type of thing that you're going to be looking for in Fortnite. And uh, we have here uh, Music Production Mastery. So nearly 3,000 subscribers for this channel. Some very impressive thumbnails, I would say, here, Jeremy. I mean, maybe potentially a little bit too much text, potentially not. Some good consistency here. Are we seeing a reason to click? Channel focus. What do we think here from this channel? Yeah, I would say for the, the text, like all the stuff in the bottom with the dots, like make your transition, remove all of that. People can't see it. Um, and then make your bigger fonts like Bedrock Masterclass, make them have bold fonts so that people can see them. And then both your uh, letting and kerning in your text, the space between your characters and the space between lines needs to be a little bigger so that again, people's eyes can rest enough to see in between each uh, word. And also try to only use two or three words. Like don't get beyond that ever or people just won't be able to see that. And then the last thing I would say is maybe try to bring in a little more color or mm. pop the color in the background of the images. Uh, are there any, any niches that you're maybe able to capitalize yeah, I on? I guess I would sort by and see. Probably Logitech Pro X is probably what they're focused on. I would imagine if you sort yeah. by most popular that'll be what we see it does seem to be but this uh this particular video is five years old this, right. uh, but yeah the popular one seems to be logic pro uh so maybe that's a keyword that you can focus on if it's still used today in the music dj industry and with that folks whew, we have done overtime here, I think, Jeremy, uh, on our live stream today because we wanted to give you as many audits as we could in the time that was available. Let's just bring Jeremy on screen. And we are going to say our goodbyes here, folks. If you do want a shout out, let us know in the uh, live stream chat as we say goodbye. If you enjoyed this live stream, then do make sure to give it a thumbs up. We really do appreciate the engagement. If you haven't already subscribed to vidIQ, well, I think it's now the time to do so because we have awesome content content throughout the entire year, uh, the entire year, the entire week. And also just want to say that um, uh, if you haven't downloaded the vidIQ Chrome extension, we've got a link in the description. And uh, yeah, Jeremy, any final thoughts here before we do our shout outs? Just make sure you focus, find your value, make sure that you give someone a reason to click, add personality to your videos, have a good storytelling philosophy. You might want to read a book on storytelling and uh, make sure that you're improving your audio 1% every week. Don't worry about where you are now. Just try to constantly improve, but click that record button and give a unique selling proposition or a unique value that no one else has. Give your flavor to your videos. And in honor of WrestleMania 35, folks, here we are, the WWE Championship. If somebody wants to make a wrestling YouTube um, championship belt, do it because it will go viral. It will get millions of views and I will buy it off you. Uh, yeah, so there we are. Going a little off topic there. Uh, but Jeremy, I don't know. You probably have no idea what I was talking about there. So I'll start with you to do some shout outs as we say goodbye here. All right. Bye, Art Tarot by D by Liron. Run and Gun, welcome 234. Tashana, Speed Draws, Like Whizzles, <laughs> <laughs> Synthesis, J.S. Weiber, Wyatt Tuber, and Wild Wolves. And I am going to say goodbyes to the following Lava Creeper, Sky Flyer, uh, Voltre. That's a really difficult name to pronounce. Entertainment Zone. Uh, we've also got Run and Gun. Apologies if we've already said that. Cooking, Cubing, 123, Toxic Minds, uh, Nolfi Snarlax, and Emilio Perez, Wild Wolves. All of you, thank you very much for joining the vidIQ live stream today. We will see you later on in the week for this special Q&A that we are going to experiment with. In the meantime, Jeremy, it is time for Awkward Waves as I press a button that takes us off the air. As always, enjoy the rest of your video making day. Bye for now. Nobody said you could stop wa uh, waving, Jeremy. <laughs> He's refusing to wave. He's refusing to wave. Good